What's up guys? Little bit of everything Southern Homestead. Here in South Louisiana, sugarcane season is coming to an end, which means spring is around the corner. Today we're going to do some fig tree pruning and then take those cuttings and try to root them and propagate them to make new trees. Let's go. All right, well here's my in-ground tree. This is a Celeste. Uh, it's between four and five years old. You can see it's already got a lot of new growth. This being the uh, latter end of January here. Uh, so we did this on purpose. Uh, we had a good freeze, I guess three or four weeks ago and we weren't quite sure despite our efforts what exactly was gonna live and what wasn't. So now that we know what branches survived and which branches haven't, we'll go ahead and we'll get it pruned. Uh, some of these cuttings, we may be able to try to root them. We'll show you how we do that. And then we'll just go from there. So we're really trying to achieve a, a balanced shape. And the height of the tree is probably seven or eight feet. So we don't, want to, we don't want the tree to grow too much taller. So when it becomes springtime, we'll do apical tip uh, bud pruning. So the buds at the tip of each branch at the top, we'll, we'll prune those off and that'll help redirect energy for fruit growth. Uh, if we would leave it, it would allow the scaffolding of the tree to continue to grow and the tree would just get larger. So we're fine with it maybe growing out, uh, especially on that right side that looks a little deficient. But we definitely don't want it to get too much taller because then we'd have to use a ladder every time we want to pick figs and it'd be a lot harder to cover the tree to protect it from birds and other predators trying to steal our figs. So let's get this tree pruned and then we'll move over to the pot the potted fig plants or the potted fig trees, I should say. Uh, every tree grown here was started from a cutting. So we'll do all of our cuttings today and then I'll show you how we root them. It's a really simple method. Doesn't take a whole lot of science or education behind it. Uh, you can go down that rabbit hole if you like. You can find things on the internet, on YouTube, showing you all kind of crazy things to, to get fig cuttings to root. But it's really not that hard. So. Like I said, we're at the end of January and the weather's still a little cool. So this is optimal time for priming, I mean, for pruning. Uh, obviously you'd like to prune the trees when it's still dormant. But like I said, we, we elected to wait to see what would grow prior to pruning because of that freeze we had not long ago. So let's get this knocked out and see what we can do. All right, so I'll post a schematic of uh, what ideal pruning looks like. Obviously no two trees will grow alike, so pruning will always be a little different from what I'm doing here today to what maybe you're doing at home. So a good pair of shears. Uh, these have seen better days, but they still get the job done. And then you really wanna clean the shears. So you can use a 10% bleach to water uh, mixture. You could use rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, anything just to kill any microorganisms or any kind of bacteria that may be growing on your shears especially in between trees you don't want to spread any kind of virus from one tree to another especially if you're working so hard to grow them from a cutting to a tree like you see here today so we have these shears I have just a little alcohol pad I'm just gonna wipe them down here doesn't take much and then I'll just wipe it with a little cloth after and then that'll be it we'll get this tree pruned I'll post a schematic of what branches we're looking to prune. So uh, anything that's kind of growing down, any branches that are touching, obviously. We really want to try to preserve the shape of the tree and then get our maximum fruit growth out of the tree. So some of the smaller branches we take, they won't be accessible as far as uh, trying to root them. You can, but I've found in the past that anything smaller than a number two pencil you kind of just wasting your time and for me anything real large i rather just uh air root it or uh, air layer it i should say and I'll, I'll post a picture here of what air layering looks like but let's get this done and then like i said we'll move on to the trees that are still in pots all right so you can see here we have two branches that kind of cross each other they touch uh, this branch is coming out real lateral here this branch is kind of growing up so what we'll do is we'll we'll go down to the smallest 
portion here where we can get it. Cut right below the nodes there and you can see there's nodes all the way up. So this will be a good one for trying to root and we'll show that later in the video. But we're just gonna lay it down here, start us a little collection. That way we know which tree it came from. So some of these smaller ones like this growing down, that's not gonna do much for us there. Uh, we really want to try to open up light to the to the base of the tree that really optimizes growth and like i said some of these larger branches that are that are coming real lateral i'm going to air layer those so snip there and you can see the white uh juice or milk substance whatever you want to call it from the inside is not coming out so these branches are still relatively dormant despite having some apical bud growth here okay All right, so you can see here where we cut, cut, cut. Uh, if anything was real big, a huge branch that we took off, I do have some tree wound repair. It's just basically a bark. You can actually see some right there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Where the tree once had an injury, you can see the branch to the left is still kind of split, but we're gonna see what grows off of it. And like I said, later, in the season, once things start to establish their growth pattern, I can always do an air layer to get rid of some of these branches. But you can see here, there's a lot of crowding. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that for now. I don't really know which way the tree is gonna go. We can take these little ones off here. We really want the tree to kind of grow outward. Uh, and it's just basically up to you how you want your tree shaped. Up here at the top was my main concern after the freeze. I kind of left more than usual. Typically I'd probably cut this one and then this one because they're kind of all growing in the same direction. You really want it to be even, you know, one each way. It's called scaffolding. Um, I'm not quite sure if those apical buds way up here have made it or not. So we're just gonna leave it alone. Like I said, we can always air layer branches off and make new trees that way. So I think that's pretty good. We'll collect those cuttings, we'll label them and then I'll show y'all how we root them. All right, so again, see if I can get that out of the sun. Shears, we're gonna clean them. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna prune these trees that are in containers now. All right. So we got this tree here. This is a this is a Celeste that I'm not quite sure which type it is. Uh, I believe it may be a dwarf variation. But if you can see here, these buds, they, they almost look dead. Uh, the freeze may have got them even though I covered them and did everything I could. We can see some green here. So this is really why we waited to prune them to make sure that we're cutting off portions that are non-viable. Uh, this branch here will be very good for air layering. We'll do it right around there, but let's see if I can get you a better view here. All right, so this one here, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. This one here is just coming straight out of the dirt. That's considered a sucker. So that's gonna take viable nutrients from the tree itself. And then you can see here and the sun is terrible i apologize but you can see this is all just looks dead but right around here it's still green so from this node distal it may be viable so we're going to cut it down at the bottom here and we're just going to put it to the side like i said it's probably a pretty good size for rooting uh you know anything bigger than a number two pencil we'll try to root it and then we'll just cut off the bad portion. So like I said, Celeste Unknown, we'll cut this one too. It's a little too small if we try to air layer it, but we can definitely try to root it. So we're gonna get a bunch of cuttings today. We're gonna do some good pruning. 
And like I said, we'll leave these apical buds alone because we're not quite sure if they made it or not. So we'll continue down the line. I don't know how many I got here. Let's see, four, nine, 10, 11, 12, something like that. And then I have some smaller trees in the front. And then I got some cuttings that I ordered online and I'll show you all the process for rooting those. So just stick with us and we'll get this knocked out and then we'll get to rooting. So this is a prime example of a tree with some suckers on the bottom. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, quite a few, and that's all stealing energy from the tree. So this is a Celeste. It's a nice little tree, has a good shape, good form. The tips seem to be intact. All those little suckers aren't gonna be able to do anything for us. We won't be able to root them. So we're just gonna cut them off and discard them. But again, we're gonna clean our shears in between and we're gonna get them cut out, so. To be honest, some of these lower branches as well can probably go, but like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna air layer the ones we can. Let's see if I can angle the camera here. So that looks pretty good. We got most of them cut out. All right, I just wanna to touch on this. So this is a Celeste fig tree. Uh, it's probably two years old, two and a half years old. It's in a wicking tub. So this is a cattle tub, protein tub, mineral tub, whatever you wanna call it. It's set up with a water reservoir, a water fill tube. But what I really wanted to show y'all is the way this tree's growing, it, all the branches kind of came up from the base. There was no true whip with no scaffolding. So what I did was I, I pulled the branches as far as I could to the outside of the edge here. I put some bamboo stakes and I tied it. So this is just a way of training the branches to grow the way you want them. That way you get the shape of the tree that you want. So just wanted to touch base on that and let y'all see. And then you can see I had to prune dead tips off of each side. And you can see there's still some See if we can get it there. There's still some dead pieces on here, but hopefully at this apical bud or this bud here, whatever you wanna call it, we'll get some growth. If not from that one, we'll get some growth. So what you see there is a Celeste tree, like I said, and we just kind of train in the branches to open up that light to the middle and let it get all the sunlight it can. That way all the energy and nutrients will cause it to continue to grow. All right, so again, this is another fig tree in a wicking tub this is an lsu purple and you can see we have really one main whip here with a, a good bunch formation of scaffolds that would probably make a pretty nice tree and you can see we've got three or four that come off lateral here real low uh, i think i'm going to leave this big one so that's why i kind of angled it out see how it grows but these little ones and you can see here these black spots I've already pruned some or done air layers on this tree. And this is that uh, tree wound repair that I talked about earlier whenever we were pruning the in-ground tree. And I'll put a link in the description for that tree, that tree wound repair. So it, it, you know, makes a good little covering and allows the tree to continue to grow without interrupting the bark. 
So it just pretty much covers up any exposed cambium. So here again, we had to tip it, and that's only because the freeze had got a few of them. So, and you can see here, this one still looks pretty dead, but it it, it may it may make something. If not, look, it's definitely growing here, here, and there. So, like I said, LSU purple in a wicking tub, and we're using bamboo stakes to train the branches to grow, to help form and shape the tree. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna label each one of them that we collected. So, see if you can see this here. So this is one that we just collected. What I have is a little marker pen, paint pen, acrylic water-based pen, non-toxic. So this was my unknown Celeste Summer Market UC. Let's see if you can see that there. So it ain't, it's not the best, but you get the idea. So. I'm gonna collect all of them. I'm gonna mark them all, and then I'm gonna set up a little area and show y'all how we prepare them and root them. All right, so we're about to do some fig tree cuttings. We're gonna set them up to root themselves. Uh, what you'll need here is some potting mix, uh, some water, obviously some fig cuttings, uh, pair of shears is always good to have available in case you have to trim or or cut any of the cuttings and then i use a uh, rooting hormone called dip and grow uh, it's worked very well for me in the past you see a box here i'll put a link in the description but it's a, a liquid that you mix with some water and you get the concentration based on the bark of the actual plant that you're trying to uh, root there so a hardwood, a semi-hardwood, and then a softwood. So you can do all kinds of stuff. And as you can see, up to 2,000 cuttings can be uh, rooted on this one box alone. So we're gonna be using that dip and grow. And then obviously you'll need a few pots based on how many cuttings you have. So I have a combination of some cuttings that I took here on the homestead and then some other cuttings that I got in the mail from various uh, other states, California, Florida, uh, different areas and I'll go through each one as we cut them as we you know we're going to score them we're going to dip them and then we're going to stick them in the, the rooting mixture which is just the, the potting mix so let's do that now all right so here we are we're going to root these cuttings that we just cut and then we also have some other cuttings that we got in the mail from I believe California and maybe Florida uh, you'll need some pots these are two quart pots I use these because it allows uh, room for the cutting to grow uh, I've kept rootings in these pots for up to a year I don't advise it because once they reach the limits of this container the growth is very restricted I use these pots because I can put more soil and keep the soil moist longer so the roots have the ability to absorb more water and it just gives me the ability to water less frequently uh, with a busy lifestyle, you know, I try to cut down any additional work that I don't have to perform. So we'll have a couple of these pots and I'm just using this tub. That way we don't lose any of our potting mix. So I'm using miracle Grow potting mix. You can get that at any big box retailer. I don't add anything to it. Uh, I see some people will do just paralyte, just vermiculite, uh, any of those things. The reason I don't add anything to it, it already has nutrients, but we're not trying to facilitate growth we're trying to facilitate rooting so you want less nutrients that way the roots will actually you know finger out and try to grow as far and expand as far in search of nutrients and that's what really gets you a good root set so we'll fill up this uh, couple of pots we have here and then I'll show you all how we use the spray and grow so I just got this Gonic uh, garden spade it works very well I'll put a link in the description but this was a Christmas gift and I've been using it quite a bit here. Uh, very clutch when you harvest and plant cabbage, carrots, different things. Uh, it has depth on it here. So, I mean, just very well made. So, All right. 
And again, like I said, that's potting mix, not potting soil. So we'll press that in. A couple of those handfuls from the bottom to help really fill them up completely. So there you go. That's one pot. And here's another one. So we have three in here. We'll find our cuttings. Pull out a couple of them. And like I said yesterday, we, we marked each one with appropriate letters so we can identify them. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll mix our dipping grow. So on the little vial here is a line. You fill it up there and then you fill it up to the 20X for these fig cuttings. Uh, all these branches are one year old or less. So they're lignified, but they're not considered a true hardwood. So just a little bit there. And what I do is I add rainwater. And it's just because it's what I have that's available. And I'll show you all that. So here, this is the sprayer I use and I'll discuss that later. But I'm just gonna get some water out of it. All right, so there's our vial. So we'll fill it up to 20X. As such. All right. What I'll do is I'll bring y'all in closer so y'all can see what's actually going on here. All right, so as always, we're gonna clean our shears. Little alcohol pad. We did a bunch of pruning earlier with these, so we just wanna make sure they clean. All right, so just for purposes here, this is my dip and grow with my rainwater. Uh, here I have a P, so that signifies LSU purple. You wanna make sure you have a little bit of growth above the top node, but on the bottom you wanna be snipped right below the node. See if you can see that there. So a little bit of growth, and this just gives the plant some ability to dry out without harming this first node. But this one already has some growth, so we wanna be real careful that we don't injure it. But what we do is we're gonna simply take our shears and from about right here down, we're just gonna slice through the bark here. I see some people shave it. Some people do all kinds of things. Uh, I've never found that you had to do much more than just slicing it. And what this does, it just kind of opens up the cambium, lets that rooting hormone get in and kind of start the process. So it's not exact science. I usually put about four or five little cuts all the way down. And then you'll stick it in this dip and grow. And the package insert says how many seconds you need to leave it. Typically what I do while that one is in there, I'll take my next one, I'll start scoring it. So for this one, we'll probably go from this node here. So one, two, three below the soil. And it may be deeper than that, but this is gonna be where our roots come from. So I'm really just scoring it as such, all the way down. So now I'm gonna take this one out. We'll put this one in and very important, don't just stab it into the dirt because then you'll wipe off all the hormone. So you make you a hole and then you go in the hole and just kind of place it and then get the tree as straight as you can and pack it in. And this is where it comes in nice again. I got extra dirt right here available just to be able to make sure I get it real nice and full and in there. And just so you're aware, this potting mix is pretty moist already, but we're gonna be watering them in pretty well after just to get the process started. Uh, today is an ideal day. It's a little overcast. The low is in the 40s and the high is mid 60s. So this will help acclimate. Uh, all these cuttings were in my fridge. They were wrapped up in a wet paper towel in a Ziploc. So to not shock them, 
you don't want to do this process on a day that it's 80 degrees outside so today would be a good day so that's one down we're gonna do oh i don't know as many as we can i think i have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 cuttings to do so we'll do this next one i don't think there's a time frame where it's too long to let it soak in the dipping grill but if you notice i scored it at three nodes but it doesn't pay to score it anything taller than your container that you're dipping it in. So that's the depth that you need to score it. And you can see my first score started there. And that just comes with experience. So you'll see what I'm talking about when you do this on your own. So we made our hole and we'll just stick it on down in there. We'll try to straighten it up as much as possible and then we'll pack it in. That's number two. So that would be a LG, so LSU Gold. And, and this cutting is a little thin. It's probably a little smaller than a number two pencil, but for me, I have better luck with thin cuttings than I do thick cuttings. And I'll show you all some cuttings that have already started to root and grow uh, whenever we're done here. So we'll move on to the next ones. We'll fill some more pots. We'll get some more cuttings. So again this is an unknown celeste this is a very nice cutting uh, a little bit smaller than my pinky here has multiple nodes real good color uh, really lignified on the bottom and it's a little green on the top uh, i trimmed off here because it was already dry this was one of those tips that got injured during the freeze but same thing so score it all the way down Score it all the way down. About three nodes there. And I could probably cut this one and get multiple out, multiples out of it, but that's not my intention. So I'm gonna let it soak there. We'll get some more pots in here. This one needs a little dirt to it. Make our hole, we'll get another cutting. So then this one is just a, just a C. So this is a Celeste. And again, very close to the node, the node where I cut on the bottom, but I left a little length on top and it'll make sense later. But again, I'm gonna just score it. One, two, three, four, we're gonna trade it out on the dipping grill here. And like it said, you can do 2000 cuttings if you had that many with that one bottle. So, and then pack it in. So that's three done already. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna finish the rest of these. I'll show you all of them when I'm done. I'll show you how I water them in and then I'll show you how I maintain them. And then we'll look at some other cuttings that I did from October. And you can see that you don't really have to wait for spring to start doing these cuttings. Figs are very resilient. They tolerate cold pretty well. You just have to protect them from freeze. All right, so that's it. Perfect. So I'm a big proponent of using rainwater. Uh, God's gift, natural, no chemicals. I especially like it when I'm trying to root fig tree cuttings. Uh, I just find that it works better. So this is my rain collection barrel off of my dog kennel. Y'all have seen it on other videos. I'm just gonna fill up this little pail and we're just gonna do some soft watering in of all those cuttings we made. And then we'll go from there. The sun's starting to kind of peek out, but I'll show y'all where I have the cuttings and why I have them there. All right, so here's the cuttings. I have them on some styrofoam blocks. Uh, 
Styrofoam is just a common insulator. It works out well for me. They're under a little roof here. You can see I got some other stuff stored under here just to keep it out the weather. Kids, little Jeep, some chairs, some buckets, some other grow pots that I've already removed plants from that I'm getting ready for the spring. But let's see what we got. 15, nope, 6, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 24 cuttings that we're gonna root here, all labeled. I used a paint marker, you can see on some. Other ones, if the marking was below the soil, I just went ahead and wrote it on the actual container. Uh, I filled up, you can see the soil all the way, and this is just to help water run off for excess. Uh, in this spot, they'll probably get about between six and eight hours of daylight, or actually sunlight, I should say and they're protected from a frost should we get a late frost again we're in the latter end of january so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna use that rainwater pail and i'm just gonna lightly water them in just to get them all started and i'll probably water this away for the first three or four times you know the potting mix was was pre-moistened but it's still going to take a good little bit. All right, so that's our initial watering. And then just so y'all are aware, uh, after we water them that away, probably two or three more times over the next day or so, I'll come twice a day with this little watering can, and I'll just lightly mist them, just like that. And I'm really trying to focus on these open ends. Uh, I've tried in the past wrapping them and covering them with different materials to try to keep moisture in the actual cutting. It's never fared well for me. I see people online doing it all the time. Not quite sure what they're doing different. If you know, leave me a comment, but like I said, it's never worked. So this is just rain water again. You can use any kind of water, just really keeping them moist. So I'll go show y'all something that we did in October and how they look. All right, so it's kind of windy on this side, but in this little trailer here, I just put them temporarily so they can get some sunlight. But you can see I got quite a few cuttings. Uh, I think 12 to be exact. Some of these cuttings came from other states. Some came from here off of trees that we pruned earlier in the season. So you can see, obviously, some great growth on some. Some mediocre growth on others. And this is why I don't like big cuttings. For me, they always take longer to root compared to something maybe a little smaller. But you can see it's going to make a little bud right there so i'm hopeful for it and again you can see how it just kind of dried out on the end that's why we left a good little length in the cutting that way the entire cutting wouldn't dry out so various different uh varieties here they're all doing pretty well and then what i have here is a black madeira tissue culture that was sent to me and it's doing pretty well so i'll use that same little sprayer and just kind of spray everything in again on these I'm trying to spray the actual cutting, keep the tops of them moist. Uh, for me, a cutting that has an apical bud on it always does better than a flat cutting. But either way, as long as you get some growth out of it and you get a new tree, that's the ultimate goal. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you hadn't already, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, you know, let us know what you think. We're just trying to show various ways to have success with common things that you can get anywhere at any big box retailer uh, dip and grow is available at home depot or lowe's potting mix not potting soil is also available and rainwater is free so all those things add some containers of your choice be it cups bags whatever and you can get to rooting your own fig cutting so again thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one